Good morning. How are y'all today? Uh, so I'm Tex and welcome to Tex Talks. I hope you're having an awesome day. Today's topic is going to be something that parents have asked me to cover, which is basically help for them. Uh, parenting skills, my style of therapy when, when doing family therapy. So here it all goes and good luck to all y'all. Hope you pick up something good that you can use in it. Uh, if not, Hey, oh, well, it's like everything in therapy. I tell you, take what you can use, use it, give it a try, figure it out. If it works well, great. If it's not working the way you want, rearrange it. So today we're diving into these series of books. You can see them on my shoulder. I'm going to hold them up and make a point of, of introducing them. Uh, the first set of them here is Magic One Two Three. This thing has been around since, you know, I don't know, since way back when, when I was dealing with my kids, and that's where I first come across Magic One Two Three. You can get the books. You can buy them online. Uh, you can buy them in your bookstore. Uh, almost all bookstores will carry this one. If not, it's easy enough to order uh, Magic One Two Three, the first book. They have one here. This is pretty good. It's dealing with teens. It's a little bit more specific. Um, for those of you that are really having a hard time reading audiobooks, uh, even DVD, for those of you that still have DVD players, um, the uh, DVDs are actually pretty decent. I have uh, lent these out to people before to watch. I've also told them if they look, most of the times your local library will have it. Um, I, I had to purchase one. I actually lent one out that didn't make it back, so I had to purchase another one. So we still see the plastic wrap on it. Uh, sometimes that happens when you lend stuff. Um, here's another good book. Okay. Now, the thing with this book that's a little bit different than this one, to me, I consider this a little bit softer approach, but I still like it. It's the idea of listening to the kids versus just barking at kids, which I'm fixing to get into in a minute. Um, and, and the Magic One, Two, Three books, they, they take an approach – it's not just a matter of hush, do what you're supposed to do, but they actually go through and talk and discuss how you as a parent can establish establish your relationship with your, your kids. Now, when parents come in and talk to me about um, they're having problems with their kids, I ask and gather information. I try to figure out what specifically is the problem. Uh, parents don't get mad. Most of the time, you're the problem. <laughs> don't know how to tell you that. I've always said I've been nicknamed the not nice therapist, so I'm just going to give it to you dead square between the eyes. You ask me what's going on and I hold up a mirror. There you go. OK. When you want your kids to do something, the first question you have to ask yourself, are you doing it? And yes, I know you can get up and holler, do as I say, not as I do. And yeah, kids look at you and learn. The other thing is, is if it's the normal routine of your house to do something, ask yourself, why are you trying to make your child do something that's out of the normal routine of the house? If nobody eats dinner at the dinner table, why do you expect your kid to eat dinner at the dinner table and behave themselves? If nobody at the house actually has conversations and talks, what do you expect? No one's going to talk. Now, granted, there's going to be times when your kids are not going to want to talk to you, just like you're not going to want to talk to your kids sometimes. The thing is, is making adjustments for those times when they are excited and they do want to talk and letting them talk by listening. First thing you need to do is develop some listening skills. And again, this is something most people are not very good at. Listening skills is about Focusing in on what the other person is saying, actually hearing what they say, but also for a moment, relaxing and allowing yourself to sort of feel like the other person feels, to literally crawl into their skin for a minute and see what it's like to wear, you know, your daughter's suit or your son's suit and see the world from their eyes. If the only reason you're getting them to talk is for you to tell them how they should think and what they should be doing and how they should be acting, well, first, you've shit it all over yourself. Stop it. 
Second thing is, is realizing that maybe if you saw things from their point of view for a minute, you might see that what they're doing makes common sense to them. And if you want the behavior to change, you have to figure out what's in it for them. Rewards go much further than punishments, but rewards in themselves can be a punishment. Too much of anything is not good for you. Giving them more of what the problem is not good. And what do I mean by that? A lot of times we will set up a reward system where because a child is spending too much time on their electronics, we set them up for a reward and say, all right, if you do your homework, you can have more electronics. As I've told some of my clients, that's kind of like telling your child, I know you have a problem with alcohol. I know you drink too much, but here's the deal. If you're really good this week and you don't drink all week long on Saturday, I'll buy you two fifths of Jack Daniels. <laughs> that's about the extent of that. Come on, think about it. The reward should be something that they enjoy. It also should be something that improves their and your lives, that enriches everybody's life. Now, getting into the, the magic of one, two, three, and it literally, to me, breaks down to a system that is so easy. Most people don't want to believe it'll work because it is so easy. So I encourage you, please read the books. They're not that big. Don't take that long. As I tease people, you know, bathroom books, you know, you should be able to finish it in about four to five sittings, okay? So take a good gander, read the book, go through it, think about it for a minute and actually pay attention. And when you do the things that are in the book, actually take the time to realize what you're doing. Now let's break that down. One of the things that it, it talks about in the book is establishing a system of where if somebody is doing something wrong, one of the children, this is for the young children first, uh, and, and as always, it's easier. If you've established a pattern with a younger child, it carries over better as they get older. If you've let your child run wild for whatever reason until now, and suddenly one day you just wanted to discipline and make everything happy, <laughs> good luck. It took you, you know, what, 10, 12, 14, 15 years to get to this point. One day is probably not going to fix it. It's going to take a little effort. So with the magic one, two, three, the concept is, is when you tell your kid to do something like pick up your room, then that's basically, you know, unless the child needs direction, don't know what they mean by pick up your room because you haven't been telling them to do that before. You might have to go through with them and pick up their room. You might have to sit there and go, all right, you know, look, look, we're, we're picking up. And you you direct them, pick up all the clothes, put them in the clothes basket, pick up all the toys, put them in the toy basket. Is there anything else on the floor? Is there anything that didn't get picked up because it's sitting on the bed, it's sitting up on the chest or drawer or whatever, and putting stuff away and then vacuuming, cleaning. Clean sheets, changing your sheets once a week. I've been in, in, in that argument with several people. Cleaning your sheets once a week, putting them in the washing machine, washing them, putting them back in the bed if you have to, if you don't got two pair. I know what it's like to be poor. I've had only one of everything. Sometimes I didn't even have one. So, yes, put them in the washing machine, wash them, put them back on the bed clean. The reason for this is you need them to understand what it is you want. Telling a child to do something that they truly don't understand is very difficult. Now, sometimes they will they will feign misunderstanding or not understanding. And you have to be able to pick through that and go, okay, calmly, rationally, all right, fine. You don't know, we'll show you. And here we go. After that, it becomes a case of when you tell them to do something, that in itself should be all you have to do. Now, here's where I find the breakdown. Many parents sit there and argue with their child. Do you have any idea what it looks like for me to sit here and watch a grown-ass adult 
arguing, arguing just with a three-year-old child, four-year-old child, five-year-old child, arguing, debating, lecturing, begging, pleading. No. When you tell your child, clean your room, the whole the whole magic in the magic one, two, three is the idea that you know you count one. And if they're arguing with you, two. And at three, there's a consequence. Now, I, I please ask you to read the books because the idea of consequences has to be sort of flexed out depending on what age your child is. Um, sometimes people ask for a rough estimate. And I, again, I encourage you to double check and read. I usually go with two times their age is the number of minutes for a timeout. That way, by the time you're 10, 20 minutes is a good timeout. When you're five, 10 minutes seems forever. When you're three, six minutes is, oh, my God, it's 100 years to them. So that's reasonable. Um, you you can adjust it a little bit, you know, depending on your child's needs. Some children, you know, 10 minutes is much harder because of their impulsivity or maybe, you know, they have ADHD or something and they really, truly don't focus that well for that long and you have to adjust it. Now, the time out is not going to your room and having fun. It is going to your room. But it's not playtime. It's not video game time. It's fine. Sit there on your bed or sit there on your floor, and that's what you do. And don't make a big production of anything else after that. In other words, I've seen parents who, who, who do the counting, send their kid to their room, and then once they're in their room, they sit there and give them 10 minutes worth of lecture. The whole point of that system is for you not to have to get worked up, angry, upset, frustrated, spend all of your time arguing with your child. The whole point of the system is so that you can maintain your sanity. So please, take a moment, think about this. When I say don't lecture, plead, argue, beg, explain, no. During the heat of the moment, you've told your child, go to their room, they go to their room, and you learn to shut up. Don't make me magic one, two, three, you. You need to hush. The whole point of this is, is you're feeding into the negative feedback that they also will enjoy. And whether you believe it or not, many kids will enjoy negative feedback. You standing there arguing with them means that they have a chance of getting what they want. Think about it. It's like, like when you're at a car lot and you're bickering back and forth. As long as that car dealer has you arguing, he knows or she knows there's a chance to get you to adjust and give them what they want. So the whole point of that is to keep you arguing and engaged. And your child naturally knows how to do that, keep you arguing and engaged. And when you're lecturing them, if you think for one minute your lecture is, is sinking in, Good luck, because, you know, I, I love Far Side cartoons. And if you've ever seen the Far Side one where the guy is fussing at his dog and it's like, you know, what he says is, you've been a bad dog, Spot. You know what you've done wrong, Spot. Spot, why would you do that? You know better. You shouldn't have done that. And then it shows what the dog actually hears, which is blah, 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 Spot, blah, 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 Spot, blah, 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 Spot. Kids are much different. They've learned to tune you out. Same way as you would if there's a noise pattern going on around you, bothering you, upsetting you, frustrating you. After a while, you don't hear the background noise anymore. So here we go. You have to figure out that all that lecturing is just you. Now, if it makes you feel good, and excuse my words, if you are so petty or so caught up in yourself that you just love to hear yourself lecture, or you love punishing because you think it's punishing and you actually get off on the punishing. <laughs> you need to go see a therapist. Bad. Really bad. Okay. If what you want to do is get your child to comply and have peace in your house, then stop it. You've told them what to do. These are the consequences. And this extends to, to basically, you know, consequences across the board. If there is something that's supposed to be done, like if your child's supposed to come in and do their chore, then do their homework, then they're allowed to play on their games. 
their reward in their mind is you're not allowed to play your games until you finish your stuff. And that gives you an extra few minutes to do something you enjoy. I don't advise that because what I would rather see is you do your chores, you do your homework, and you're allowed to go outside and play. You're allowed to read a book. You're allowed to have these leisure times. Not rewarding with electronics, but again, small battles one at a time. Now, if your child comes home and they don't do what they're supposed to and they jump on their video games, then there, there doesn't need to be a lecture. You've already told them. If I come home and you haven't done these things, you lose your video games and you lose them for the rest of the night. And you still have to go do your chores. And if you don't do your chores tonight, then we don't even have to worry about what's going to happen tomorrow because you already know you're losing it tomorrow. I'm not saying lose it for weeks. Just remember, this, this punishment is supposed to be short to the point so they understand it. Then move on. So, so again, the idea of you do what you're supposed to do, then you get your leisure time. What I find parents will do is scream and holler and fuss, lecture. Why didn't you do that? You should have done that. I come home. I'll come home to a dirty house. How can I do this? See, now you're trying to guilt and shame your child. Not only are these very ineffective ways of doing it, they're very damaging. Think about it with you. How would you like it if everything you did wrong in your life, you had someone shame you and you got to carry your little little cloak of shame on you everywhere you walk about you're a bad person. No, you're a person who did something they shouldn't have done. You may have even done a bad thing. You yourself are not a bad person. So in this sense, this, you know, lecturing about, look how tired I am, look how bad you're trying to guilt your child. <sighs> Please stop it. And if you can't stop it, then ask yourself, why do I feel the need to do that? What is it? This isn't about parenting. This is about me personally now. And I'm asking you to put that aside for a second and deal with what you want to accomplish with your child, a better relationship and understanding and have them do the things they're supposed to do. So when they do pick up, do what they're supposed to do. Great. They've done it. Then they can play. And I also ask you to reflect on what you're asking them to do and asking you yourself to do. Because here's the catch. If you come into the house and you expect your child to do their homework, do their schoolwork, do their chores, then they get their free time. And you walk in the door and throw your shoes down and put your feet up on and start watching TV and holler, I'll get to dinner later. I'll do the things I need to do later. What kind of example are you setting? Oh, and I know some of you will holler, well, I've worked hard all day and I deserve that. You may deserve it. You don't deserve to have them see you break your own rules. Or do you, do you need to be punished? I don't know. I know you're tired. I know you're frustrated. But this is where you set the example. Now, here's where some parents will go, well, then fine, I'll let them play because that's what I want to do. Okay, then don't bitch when the house is messed up. Don't complain when, when things aren't going the way they're supposed to because you didn't do what you're supposed to do. You come home and you do, you, you do what you expect your children to do. You come home, you pick up, you put your stuff away, you know, you start your things. Now, I understand if you need a break. And in some houses, the kids do need a break. They really had hard studies and stuff during the day, and they need that 15 minutes. You time it. But you yourself go by the same timer. You come home and you go, all right, you get 20 minutes to just, just sit and chill, read a book, take a nap, whatever. Then fine, you have 20 minutes. I think I've said before, one of my other talks, one of the ones that blew my mind apart is the parent complaining because their child goes in their room and plays video games all night, won't come out to talk to anybody. And I'm like, well, fine. If I get them to come out of their room, where are they going to come to talk to you? Oh, well, I'm in my bed watching TV. What? You're doing the exact same thing you don't want your child to do? Reflect on yourself. Think about it. And I've had parents try to play the guilt card on me. 
well, it's not my fault. I have depression. Uh, okay. You also have kids. And I hate to sound mean, but you need to suck it up. And I, and I hate to use those words, but suck it up and think about what do I want and how will this make me more depressed tomorrow? And this is where the hard part comes in. If you look at it, you realize that, yes, because I have this problem, anxiety, depression, you know, whatever you got going on, and I want to break the rules, but I want my child to uphold the rules or worse yet, if I break the rules today, what's the price tomorrow? Tomorrow, my child comes in and says, well, you did it. Now I have to deal with that. So this is the tough part is sitting down and going, yes, I really, really want to just go hide in my room. And I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm going to have to pull myself together, get my stuff done, and then go sit in my room. And I know that sounds hardcore to some of y'all. And for that, I apologize. But you, you know, I, you ask how to make it a better relationship and a better home. Well, I'm, I'm telling you. And if you don't want to listen to it, then you don't want to listen to it. I got it. It's okay. And I do have a lot of people tell me, well, I just can't do that. And I'm like, okay, then don't. It's not going to affect me. It affects you. It affects your life. It's, it affects your child, your family, your relationships. See, this is where the tough part, when I said, parents, look at yourself. What are you doing? Now, back to the one, two, three part. You've given your child directions. You've told them what to do when they don't do. Have clearly defined consequences. Don't go off on a consequence binge. Don't get up and go, fine, you're not playing any of your video games tonight. And now I'm mad at you too, and I'm also going to take them away for the rest of your week. And fine, I'm also going to do this and that. And it's like, all right, you're on, you're on a punishment binge here. <laughs> Come on, stop it. You have set the rules. These are the rules. And when you take stuff away, that is the punishment. I had one parent come in and tell me, you know, well, I, yeah, I took stuff away from that. And then I sit there and I told them this and I said that and they should be ashamed of that. Man. And I'm just looked at them and I'm like, that wasn't our agreement. And what are you talking about? And I said, the consequences of not having cleaned their room and did their homework by the time you come home was you take away their gaming privileges for the night. It wasn't you take away their gaming privileges. Then you scream and holler and you lecture and you shame and guilt and you make them feel bad and you make the whole night miserable. And that wasn't what we agreed on. We agreed on you take the privileges. Fine, take them. That's what you've done. And, and don't be tied and attached to how they react. See, here's where the bigger problem comes in. And this is where you have to really analyze yourself as a parent. If they get mad, upset, frown, pout, whatever, as long as they're not throwing things, breaking things, disobeying, they can be mad. Let them be mad. Let them express their mad, whatever. Sit in your room and mully grumble all you want. Have a ball. To them, it's like when you're doing the lecturing, this is their way of lecturing and you're listening to it when you don't have to. You're an adult. Pull up those big boy pants, those big girl pants. Go into the next room and do it. Start on what you need to do for the night. Start setting the example and ignore all that other stuff. The end result you want is for them to do the things they need to do to improve their life, to improve the family life and make everything cohesive. If you are stuck on getting admiration, respect, fear, if your dignity is tied into how they react to what you're asking them to do, take a step back and think about that. If they're going to respect you, it's going to be because you stuck to your guns and you didn't make a behind out of yourself. You told them what they needed to do. You enforced the rules and that's that. Think about it. I've had parents come in and tell me, well, yeah, they did what they were supposed to do, but but they were making faces and 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 they were giving me these eyes and all that. And I'm like, oh my gosh. 
who's the parent and who's the child. So they made faces. If you let it affect you and they saw it, congratulations, they won the battle. Because that was their whole point in doing that is to get you upset so that they're trying to get you upset so that you quit enforcing the rules, so that you quit with the consequences. In other words, they, they will learn quickly that if they can aggravate you enough and then you give up on doing the stuff, they win the game. This is about routine. This is about just doing the same thing over and over, day in, day out. And after a while, it gets to be simple. At some point, most kids, not all, I will say there are some kids that you, we do need different techniques with. We do, do need different tactics. Majority of kids are not that way. For most kids, after a while, they just kind of learn to do what they need to do in order to get by and keep the peace. And on those days when they do break the rules solidly, by then, by the time you've got it down where they're obeying the rules most days, on those days when they don't, then you can sit there and question and go, well, that's odd. Most days we don't have a problem with this. What is going on? And maybe you do find out that, you know, they broke up with their, their boyfriends or girlfriends or something really went bad at school. This is how you can tell something's going on in their world. And this is your chance to listen. Now, the last part of this I want to talk about is the idea of talking and answering, because kids will do this. One. Why? Why? Why do I need to do that? And parents feel they have a need to answer. So think about this for a minute. Is the reason they're asking because they truly want to know? Or is the reason they're asking just to aggravate you? Or to get a point to argue with you about. And I've had parents go, well, I hate it when somebody tells me to do something and don't explain why. And I'm like, then don't go to work. I mean, cop pulls you over. You're speeding. You get a ticket. And you want to argue. Well, why is that the speed in here? Really? <laughs> Just, you sped. You've seen the sign. You get a ticket. I don't think that's fair. Okay, you don't think it's fair. Here's your ticket. Why can't you let me go just this one time? Here's your ticket. Well, fine. Okay, fine. Here's your ticket. <laughs> it's the same thing. If your child really wants to know why you do something, why there's a rule, why they have to do something. Then I invite you to do this. Tell them, I'll be glad to answer that question for you. Once you've finished your chore, once you've finished your time out and things are done, then if you really want to know, you come sit with me and I will take a moment, sit down with you and explain to you why. I can almost guarantee you they will never come. Because they really don't want to know why. They just want to argue. Now, every now and then, they really want to know why. Like, why is this my curfew? Why is why does this need to be done? Why do I have to do this before I do that? Sometimes, and then you can sit down. You can actually talk to them and go, okay, this is what the rules we established. This is what happens when we don't do this, whatever. And you don't have to go into a big, long lecture. There's no screaming, hollering. This is a simple explanation of bup, 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 one, two, three. And your child may go, well, I don't think that's fair. And you can ask them, well, what do you think would be more fair? And they may come up with a stupid answer. Or they may come up with a reasonable one. Every now and then they go, well, it just don't make sense for me to sweep and mop my room when I know that two hours later I'm going to do this thing that dirties it. And then you go, well, when would be a better time to sweep and mop your room? When's a better time to vacuum your floors? I mean, one of the funniest ones I hear is, I don't, I, why, just, why make my bed? I'm just going to, you know, come back tonight and mess it up. <laughs> I do have a smart aleck answer sometimes for that. Well, then why do you wipe your butt? What? Why do you wipe your butt? You're just going to poop again later. And I get a look sometimes and they're like, and I'm like, oh, that's nasty. And I'm like, bingo. <laughs> bingo. 
when you don't clean and change your sheets, you have dead skin laying around in your sheets and the things that eat dead skin. Wash your sheets. I know some of you just freaked out. You're probably going to think, oh, I got to go wash my sheets now. That's why you wash them once a week. Come on. You make your bed so that the dust and things in the air don't fall onto your sheets that you're sleeping on. They fall onto the cover on the top. Come on. I shouldn't have to explain this to you kids. You also make it because it gives your life a sense of order. If you make your bed and you straighten up around you, then you start to have a sense of pride in who you are and what you do. You do things because you want things to look and be this way. And then you start to get organized and you start to organize other things around you. But when you just leave everything willy nilly, and don't get me wrong, I'm not the neatest guy in the world. You can see I, I clutter. But there are certain rules I go by. You go to the bathroom, you wash your hands. You sleep in the bed, you have clean sheets, you make your bed. You wear clean clothes. Simple rules. All right. So enough of that. Let me get off my soapbox. Like I said, take take the time. Like I said, you can catch this at your local library. They have it there. You can get it from the local library. Uh, the same way with the book. Same way, I think, with the audio book, local library. Or you can order your own. Um, and then this one now, I, I think I had to go online and order a devil's book. But it, it was a good. Someone recommended it because they, they, they were doing uh, kid therapy. And they're like, eh, you know. Taking a peek. And I like the idea of figuring out how to listen to your kids, which, again, I'll talk to you later. This listening thing goes back to some of this drama triangle. OK, it goes back to the idea of where you're at and how you understand people and, and basic connecting to people. So, yes, I do encourage you to listen to your kids. But the time to argue with your kids is not when you're trying to get something done. One, two, three. All right. Y'all have a great day. Good night.